Hello and welcome to another fabulous edition of the Electronic Cafe. In this episode, we'll show you uh, the chat that Mark and I had with a rather incredible remainder. Uh, a band made up of three awesome musicians, um, being Neil Arthur from Blamange, yes, the legend that is. Uh, Liam Hutton, who's just done some amazing work with the Young Fathers, uh, that album again is brilliant. And Finley Shakespeare, what an amazing synth wizard that guy is as well. So the three of those guys got together to produce this album under the name Remainder, and we really think that you should know about it. Um, we were delighted when they said they'd come and talk to us. Three of the nicest guys you could ever wish to meet, and they've made one hell of an album. So sit back and enjoy our chat with Neil, Liam, and Finley making up the remainder. Enjoy. Well, <laughs> if you give me a minute, I'll go and get my different top on, Liam. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Give me a second. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got an orange jumper, Finley? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no, he's sadly not. Oh, oh, hang on. I'm feeling left out here. Yeah. Yeah. I've just oh, got a black right. like, lab coat. That's all, <laughs> That's all I've got around here. <laughs> Uh, so welcome to another mega edition of Electronic Cafe. We're joined by not one, but three amazing musicians today who've created an outstanding album. Mr. Neil Arthur, who needs no introduction. Welcome back to Electronic Cafe, sir. Uh, great to also welcome Finley Shakespeare and Liam Hutton, who combined have released this uh, even song under the name The Remainder. Gents, as I said, thanks for coming on to Electronic Cafe. Delighted to have you here. Um, and congrats on the album. Um, you must be pleased. We, we, we're seeing tons of feedback on it, all positive. You, you must be really pleased with it. Very much so. I think, yeah, I, yeah, didn't really realise it would it would go down as well as it has. Yeah, I saw some of your comments for you on on your Facebook page, and yeah, it's, it's a standing album. Um, you know, when, you know, when we last spoke, me and Mark said you were kind of the most busiest man in music. You're not doing much to dispel that rumour at the moment. <laughs> I like to keep myself um, busy. <laughs> And I'm I'm a lucky man, really, because uh, I'm a lucky man, Andy, because, you know, getting to work with, with Liam and Finley on this, you know, I'm learning all the time, you know, when, yeah. when you get to work with, you know, these two. We're good friends. And it's just been an absolute pleasure to uh, be involved in, in this album. Yeah, know, it, comes, so it comes through, mate. It really comes through. And, and Liam, how did you guys get together? How did it all sort of... Because I, I, I know there's a bit of background between Finley and Neil from previous time, but uh, with Finley and uh, 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 Neil, but where, where, how did you bring this all together? How did you guys sort of make it all happen? Um, well, there's there's a bit of a sort of family connection, I suppose, between me and um, Neil's manager, also the remainder manager, um, Steve, who I I know as Fluffy, but that's that's not that's another story. Um, in that in future emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Waiting to be once again for a while, and it won't even matter that I came ill prepared. I guess he just knew that I was sort of I'd been doing music, making my own music and doing the whole session drumming thing for, yeah. for ages. Um and yeah, one one day he just suggested that I started, you know, that I, I start sending ideas over to Neil, which which I did. I think the first track was Even Song, I think. Um so I just sent that, which was very, very it was like a it was like an eight bar loop or something. 
and I sent that over and that was it. That was that was the beginning really. That was in two thousand wow. two thousand fifteen. Oh really? Quite, oh, yeah, yeah. It's quite a long time ago. Um uh, so, yeah. Uh, sorry, Liam. Um you were sending me some really interesting ideas over and I I just kind of they were just really fantastic grooves and really lovely rhythms and um uh some beautiful melodies on there and stuff like that. And I felt really inspired to, you know, write and add synths and guitar at times and obviously vocals and things. It was yeah, and uh, as Liam said, you know, fifteen uh, two thousand and fifteen when wow. we when we initially started on it. Yep. And after that, that that was when Liam at that point hadn't drum with Lamorne's live. So then the next stage was Liam started, you know, kind of fortunate enough to have Liam join us on tours and stuff like that. So we yeah. got chatting a lot more about the next stages and kept working and whittling away at this, these yeah. different songs. Is that how it works with you, Neil? I mean, because, I mean, you're very prolific with, say, Blamond, Fader, um, Near Future, and you've had solo albums. If someone sends you something, that triggers something else in your mind and it, you go off on... Uh, you know, on a different route or a slightly different route. I think the crucial thing is, like, uh, yeah, you kind of, as I said, this learning, this, it's all, you're always learning, aren't you? So you you never know what you're going to get, you know, and if you decide to get involved in a project, you've got to be, try and be as open-minded as possible. Yeah. Um, and then something, some you receive something and then you have an opportunity to react to that. Yeah. And then in turn, you send that back to them. And and I'm talking about in, in much of the time we were exchanging files, you know, via um Tinternet, you know, who we were sending stuff. No, I, I tended to send it by by second class post. I'm a bit slow. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um so we'd be exchanging files like that. It was it was a rare occasion that we'd get together. Um, I think I only went to Liam's once to actually kind of where we actually got in the same studio. And it wasn't until, and you know, this is this is when it really changed, when we asked Finley to get involved. Mm. The three of us were exchanging files. The, that point where, when we realised it was Finley, I think Finley should take over here and explain, but it was Finley's kind of observation. I said, Finley, please say, you know. It's... Yeah, I, I mean, I think I think it got to a point where we had like nine or ten tracks and I kind of had just lined all the like rough cuts up. Yeah. Said, hang on, this is, you know, 40 minutes worth of stuff. This is an album, isn't it? And that's, yeah, that's pretty much what's ended up on the album. There's maybe one or two tracks that, that are still kind of in progress. But yeah, it, it just suddenly kind of... I guess ballooned out of nowhere. Watching cardinal spider repairing its web. You said moving closer. I remember you said broken manhole cover. Dead man suits cover. Dead man that must have been halfway through kind of the whole covid period really sure. yeah um yeah because that was a bit mad i remember working on stuff at home and just you know think like itching to get back into the studio because thinking well i, I want to put this you know, thing through that synth but that's in town and i'm stuck at home and i can't go anywhere you know and um but yeah it was it was really good i mean i think i think like especially at that point when we kind of had you know proper songs it, it really went very quickly then. And then when we finally got in the same room together, um, <laughs> was great. I mean, that was a, that was a great few days, blisteringly yeah. hot in that place, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was say, like you've got, you, cause you're quite a prolific solo ice mate. So you all of a sudden you're part of a super group. <laughs> that must, must've been a nice relief in COVID for you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, <laughs> It was it was nice to actually kind of work with people as well yeah. for a change because, <laughs> you know, it can get a bit lonely. 
I mean, we were still asked the question about whether it was done remote, recorded remotely, or whether you ever ever got together. And I think you just answered that there was a there was an occasion where you did get together. I mean, was mm -hmm. that to record anything specific, or was it just you know, was it the drums maybe, or were the drums played, or was there programmed drums? I mean, how, what was the uh, the live bit in the album? Well, I think Li Liam, Liam, you did all the like live drums yourself yeah. like, yesterday. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I did all the live drums just just on my own, um, kind of as as an afterthought, really. Um, but yeah, I think most. Yeah, I'd say most of the writing was done remotely yeah. across uh, Tinter, Tinternet, or sec second we're class. We're all going to talk about that now. That's what <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think yeah, that right. that day that we actually finally got together, all three of us. Um, I think we added quite a few extra bits as well and mm -hmm. these um yeah we did a bit of ad prod additional production at your <laughs> with your 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 uh amazing equipment which you, you'd probably be better to describe that stuff than me sorry for interrupting i i, I remember shoving a load of stuff through your ms20 um, yeah during the process of mixing it that was going through live and we had Liam's drums going through it. I can't remember what else. So, sorry, Liam's drums, um, the program drums at that yeah. point, um, yeah. and then your live drums as well. Yeah, yeah. It was just because I think we got together. I think we said, "Well, we need to mix all this stuff." And then within those few days, it was like, "Oh well, you know, can we make I don't know the snare a bit snappy?" So you'd send the snare through you know, a synth and double it up with the synth part. And then it kind of even, you know, went further than that. We'd be like, well, can we, you know, put some more fairy dust on it? And it, you know, we there was essentially kind of like a, a second blast of writing in, in those few days. But yeah, that was the main focus, I think, for us to get together was to actually mix it. And then there were like a few tweaks that we wanted to make afterwards. But well, yeah, it was it was really... It was quite funny because for something that had been kind of, you know, I, I only joined this, you know, several years in. I mean, for Neil and Liam to be working on this stuff since, what, 2015? And yeah. then suddenly in a few days it's finished. <laughs> it was quite mad. It was a bloody, it was a bloody it was relief quite to mad. meet you, Finley. <laughs> We saw you, Finley, supporting uh, Neil Ramond in uh, Chinneries in South End, and um, you know, it means it was an inspired call for the guys to give you a shout because, I mean, yeah, you you was on your stage on your own, and there were you, you needed to multitask. There was arms everywhere doing what you That's amazing doing to get the sound. So, <laughs> Thank I mean, you. So it was a uh, it was an inspired uh, shout to give you a call. I think. Yeah, no, it's, it's a pleasure to work with the guys. I mean, yeah, they're, they're two really lovely chaps. I think we, we all have a laugh together. And, yeah. you know, there's we're all kind of bringing something in, a little bit different to the table, you know, which is kind of the, the heart of any good collaboration. You know, you've got a kind of common target, I guess. You know, yeah. you're on the same path, but you're all interested in different things. And... um yeah, it's just it's just been great fun, really. It's been really, really good texture. fun. I think your three inputs, as you say, bring a lot of text to this album. You know, it's got a lot of depth to it, like from the drums you can hear, from your bits of synth and your vocals, with you know, obviously with all the amazing lyrics of Mr. Arthur. Um, you know, it's quite incredible. Liam, I think it's fish, you've officially got the coolest mum. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I've yeah. read how she did all the little interlude pieces, which is, you know, fa yeah, fantastic. What a good job she did, you know. Uh, how, how did she end up getting that? It, was it something she just, how did it happen? Because it was quite inspired, I think. Yeah, well, she's um, she's al always, you know, she's always been a sort of a sound artist in her own right. And she's she's a sound engineer. She works for the BBC and has always done 
you know, live live work in that sense, but has always had that kind of artistic streak um, where she kind of has, you know, work works on her own projects. Um, so, yeah, that, that was quite a late decision as well in the whole process. It was, it was even after mixing um, that Steve, the manager, um, kind of suggested it. I, I didn't even think of it myself. I was just like, Damn. you know, like, you know, why would I get my mum involved? Kind of thing. <laughs> but um, but no, no, I just it didn't it didn't cross my mind until it was suggested by Steve and Neil. I think you both had the, had a discussion before yeah, nice. mentioning it to me, and um, yeah, I was just totally up for it because I've I've heard her work obviously, and I know that she she would have done a great job and did do an amazing job. Um, so yeah. I think she ended up using the stems for each individual track alongside some other little tricks and, you know, sort of ideas of her own. But, um, yeah, each um, interlude is sort of comprised of of a piece of work that's kind of mangled up uh, of the, you know, stems from each individual track sort of thing. Totally works, mate. Does your mum do it yeah. BBC, Liam? Does she do... You, does she work on like soundtracks for programs, or does she do something else? She's uh, she's a studio manager, and I, I think that slash producer, and I think that kind of just means she she um, engineers a lot of the sessions, and she does she pulls people in. She'll put the team together to engineer a particular live session for Radio Three, or um, yeah, she's been with Radio Three for quite a while now it used to be radio five right um, now she's with radio three so yeah all the, all the live engineering lots stuff. of free lots of free tickets for the uh bbc yeah that's right yeah yeah proms <laughs> great stuff proms and then and then some yeah i've seen some great gigs very very busy Um, like the lyrics, as usual, they're, they're, they're so observative. I mean, it's a great gift you've got. Um, but did you did you have some of them ready before you got to go with the guys, or was it just the music that you know when Liam sent you that that track that got you inspired and started writing, or a combination of the two? Or I think it was a, a combination of the two. And thanks very much for yeah that compliment. Um, they and, are, mate. They're brilliant. Know, that's, that's very kind of you. Uh, but it would be a combination of two. I write all the time, uh, you know, yeah. just things you see around, uh, yeah. you know, to, you know um, just bits in between the cracks on everyday life, really, you know, and uh, observations. And then, for example, Liam would send me a piece of music and that would just, there's one um, uh, in particular sent to, and lots of them, but, when lift music arrived, it wasn't called lift music. It was called something else. I don't remember what you called it earlier, but uh, <laughs> you know, some some obtuse title. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bizarre. Anyway, it came over, and it was just the groove that he'd sent me. And yeah. I think at the time, Liam and I, and I think Finley, we were all on tour. I think Finley was supporting us, and we were doing promoting. One one Blumange album, um, maybe mindset, right? And the, it was the the whole thing of the hotels and the kind of the the corridors and the lifts and this. And I must have just I can remember kind of writing down these ideas. And I had this piece of music that uh, in its embryonic yeah. form that Liam had sent me. So in that case, it it was inspired by the music that Liam had, this groove that he'd sent me. Yeah, cool. One of the areas, it's kind of a mishmash. With all your with all your individual works, I think obviously there's a good production here that you all have. And it's noticeable listening to uh, the Remainder album that sonically it's, it's really impressive. I mean, if you listen to it on 
know, we've got the vinyl. I've also got the CD. If you listen to it on speakers or headphones or sonically, there's a nice there's a nice bottom end to it. It's a nice warm sound. It's like a it doesn't sound electronic, and sometimes they can sound a little bit thin if that makes sense. It's mm -hmm. got really it's got a really nicely produced sound, which is obviously testament to you three guys. No, oh, thank you. Thanks thank a lot. you. It means a lot. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, sometimes you listen to an album and it can be a great album, but the production lets it down because it just sounds a little bit thin. Whereas this sounds like, you know, really, it's a nice bass. I mean, the drum sound, one of our questions was, was it live drums or was it programmed, which Liam has answered. But it just gives it, you know, the synths sound nice, the vocals sit nicely. It's sonically, it's a really impressive piece of work. Thank um, you very much. Thank you. Thank tough you. question, maybe, for you guys, because it's your baby. I mean, my favourite track is Even Song. That little rhythm hook is such an earworm as soon as i heard it i was just so into it and, uh, and me and michael talked about this before you came on we were both going yeah but that track's really good <laughs> that track's really good <laughs> it's a question you don't have to answer if you don't want to but have you guys got a favorite track on the album i would i'd say even song as well um probably for the same reason as you actually i think that if we're talking about the same bit but that that <laughs> It sort of like harks back to the the beginning of the project for for me as well because I sent that sort of first like eight bar loop to Neil and then he sent it back with the vocal and some other synth ideas and there's that kind of layered um, kind of like do, 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 that yeah. thing yeah <laughs> that just like I heard that and I was just so excited and just like oh my god that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> Hey, brilliant, mate. Yeah, well, yeah. Up until yesterday, mine was even song, but then I kind of really got into the remainder yesterday. I was listening to that on on, on, uh, rot yeah. on rotation. That's a really nice groove and sound on there. Disrespectful, but it do it anyway. Ain't anyway at any time. And at no extra cost than the demons on your shoulder. Finley, you know, I don't know if you've got a favourite. Probably, it's a tough one to answer. But if you, yeah, like, it it changes each time. Like each time yeah. I come to it, I I keep thinking like, oh, I'm really going to enjoy you know this track, and then yeah. it'll be a different one that kind of like just trumps it in that listening session. Yeah, I mean, I think I think for me, like Dead Farmers Field has a particular resonance for the same reason as as with Liam. Like that was the first track that I added anything to. And then I think, funnily enough, after that, it was even song. Yeah. Um, both of those were quite fully fledged, I think, when those came across to me. So it was very much like, I'll just add like a little, you know, organ part or a little drum machine part or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, it keeps changing. It keeps yeah. changing. I didn't listen to it for ages um, <laughs> after finishing it. Um, yeah. Then... Finley and uh, myself and then at other times Liam and myself have been going off and doing uh, festivals in different places in the country and sometimes on a journey um, back uh, not necessarily together actually, I don't think ever when we were in the car together but on the way back from doing one of these I would listen listen to the album because of that distance since we'd finished it it was quite refreshing listening to it and I've got. To, I find it difficult. A bit like both, um, uh, well, particularly Finn. Finn just said my favourite changes, um, and I really enjoy lift music. And I, I particularly like uh, Bro Broken Man or cover. Yeah, yeah that's a great track. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like the backing vocals from Mr. Shakespeare on that as well. It was very cool. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> question would you take it live take it out on the road <laughs> yeah, we'd look, yeah we'd love to we'd love to take it out live it'd be, be lovely to as well 
we have talked about it, you know. It's just where do we put the kettle drums? They'll never fit in the back of the car, you know. So, <laughs> you know <I> <laughs> yeah, we, I, we'd love to take it out live, and it is uh, something that uh, you know Liam Finley and myself have been have talking about. So you never. Know. Hello. You could have you could have the remainder supporting Blamond on a gig. That'd be a big night for Neil though, being two shifts in. <laughs> big night for everybody. Be a long one, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, when we last spoke to you, mate, we asked yeah. about what bands were making your ears perks. I know you mentioned your son's uh project. Is is anything else like that's made your ears perk up? And I'll refer that to the other guys as well afterwards but we like to get our, list, our viewers good because we're all about talking about new bands as well and like with this project etc and you know some of the guys like you are making such great music is there anything you're listening to that's sort of made you sit up and listen recently and go well that's really cool um i sorry me talking again here and i do apologize uh i got a text from finley whilst i was away for a few for a week on Pam Holiday. <laughs> and he's, I won't tell you what, how he said it, but he, he advised me to listen to the latest Fever I am. <laughs> and he knows that we all we all like Fever Ray. Anyway, so yeah. I was listening to that yesterday, and my goodness, there's some good stuff on there. She's really yeah. yes. It's brilliant. It's an absolutely brilliant album. So I, uh, Fever Ray. I'm also really, and this is just because... Liam has played with them. I'm really enjoying the Young Fathers. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we All saw them support in Depeche Mode, mate, at Twickenham, and right. they, they really made an impact. Other than that, I was listening to, uh, I was in Scotland um, at the weekend celebrating mate of mine's birthday, Malcolm Ross, who was in Orange Juice and Joseph K and that lot. Yeah. We're still very good mates. And I was staying with Malcolm and his family. Uh, we were playing a football match, you know, I still play football and that, and, well, I stand on the pitch. And we ended up listening to um, L Louis Armstrong and Johnny Cash, amongst many other things. So, across, yeah. the, across the range there. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. Well, what about you, Liam? Anything that's caught your ears recently? Yeah, um, well, yeah, that, that Fever Ray album, um, <laughs> definitely, I, was, I would, probably would have mentioned that. That's... Uh, it's amazing. Um, scary cover. Just, say again. <laughs> scary cover. Yeah. Scary cover. Yeah, I love the whole aesthetic. It's super yeah. weird. It's quite sort of Aphex Twin, like yeah. just really almost unnerving. But um, <laughs> yeah, great stuff. There's an album. Um, I can't remember the, the title of the album, which is helpful, but an artist called Live E. Yes. Uh, like Live E. Yeah. Um, I think she had a single which was uh, being played on six music quite a lot um but the that album i think it's called Gir girl in the half pearl i've just remembered i think that's what it's called um seen it somewhere yeah Last yeah time. it's really good it's sort of a good crossover between um sort of r b sort of hip-hop american 90s kind of vibe um and some some pretty out there um electronic production and sampling awesome which which i love singly apart from fever ray <laughs> it's like you're all the fever ray fan club here aren't we <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think it's i'm a bit biased because it's mostly stuff from mates to be honest <laughs> but um uh a lot of general magic at the minute uh battery operated orchestra as well um i've just had severed heads on all day to be honest because um i woke up with one of those tracks in my head um licking orchids as well and luke not and been listening to a lot of his stuff recently so probably awesome. relatively small names but yeah really I, I don't know just kind of pushing everything forward i think and and just you know stuff that sounds absolutely incredible from not a lot in terms of you know the the raw materials of it so yeah, yeah. yeah. i'm not going to write about you anymore i'm done with all that it's over it's of the past i don't We were just talking to uh, 
uh, Mark Hawkins at the weekend from Mesh. He's got his first solo album under the moniker of Black Car Burning, which is really good. But we asked him the same thing, what, what he's listening to or what his favourite album is. And he said that Taylor Swift, we ended up talking for 20 minutes on Taylor Swift. Oh, oh, wow. A lot of people <laughs> said the new Taylor Swift. Maybe he's got the cop. Maybe he's got the copy with Cabri Voltaire on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that must have blown a lot of people's minds. Yeah, so too. But I mean, guys, like, we're, we're also you know, Finley, we're loving Illusion of Memory. Great album, obviously. Young oh, Fox. Thank you. Neil, your album last year, you know, Private View featured in our top. We made our top five of our, our top thirty show. Um, a new Blamondi album out next week, Mr. Arthur, for what your work <laughs> I mean, I've, when you said you're in the studio with Benj, I thought I'm probably not far removed, Rob. <laughs> There's got to be, really, isn't there? Yeah, well, yeah, there is. You set a precedent now. You really yeah. have. But it's great. And I said, you know, to all our viewers, if you haven't got any stuff, get it because it's all very cool music. So, and, and this is just. You know, I'll, 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 it'll be an interesting conversation. We might start talking about albums of the year around about October, November, but that is an amazing piece of work. It really is. And I, I know you're all proud of it and say so you should be. Um, but I just want to say congrats on the stunning album. I'm so pleased it's got such critical acclaim. And you certainly got five stars from me and Mark. It's it's mm. a great album. Just oh, wanna... Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you so much. Look, thank, yeah. Thanks, guys. And Neil, always a pleasure, mate. Finney, lovely to meet you again. But because uh, I, I say, at least I'm not coming running at you saying how great you are this time. But, <laughs> but, but, but thanks for your time. And, and Liam, pleasure to meet you, mate. And uh, you've officially got the coolest mum in the world. So. <laughs> well, fin Finley, oh, it's, always you, a bit, it's always a bit worrying when uh, a six foot skinhead comes running towards you at South End. <laughs> <laughs> it was only it was only Andy to buy the album, I think. <laughs> yeah, he was. I think I was probably just and, and, and he finally kind of signed it for me. So yeah, <laughs> he was scared. He was scared. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> the writing's a bit shaky. Again, <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah, from me as well. I mean, it really is a fantastic album. We love it. Um, thanks for your time today. Um, we will urge all of our subscribers to check it out if they haven't already. But thanks for your time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Really loved it. Thanks, guys. Andy and Mark, thank, thank you both very, very much. much. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. Thank you, thank you Liam. Thank you, Finley. Yeah, Speak thank soon. You. Cheers, guys. See you, everybody. Yeah, see you, Finley. Oh, see you, Liam. See you, Neil. Yeah, see, see you, everyone. boys. <laughs> Bye. 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 I am Beyonce. <laughs> the PC conscience gives some away. How could you carry on? Aimless in direct. So that's it for another awesome episode of the Electronic Cafe. Neil, Liam, Finley, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. Absolute joy to have you on. You're always very welcome here on the Electronic Cafe. Um, before we shut this episode down, a couple of things I want to tell you about. Um, Electronic Cafe Live Volume 2 has been announced. We had a very successful launch of Volume 1 at the Water Rats. March 16th, 2024. Bigger venue. Uh, we're playing at 229 in Great Portland Street. And what a lineup we have for you. We have Tiny Magnetic Pets. You know, one of the nicest bunch of people you go wish to meet. Great friends of the Electronic Cafe. Delighted that they're going to be playing at the gig. Uh, Peter Dugal, uh, again, top man, friend of the EC, uh, who also partners with Wolfgang Fleur. So we have Wolfgang Fleur at the event as well and a DJ set by the factory legend that is Mr. Mark Reader. Uh, so what a night we've got planned for you guys. Um, I'll ask Mark to put a link for the tickets here down below, but you need to get them quick, because even though it's not until next March, they're starting to sell pretty quickly. 
um, because you've got an amazing lineup. Um, so get your tickets. We'll see you there. Uh, that'll be amazing. Um, and also don't forget to subscribe to the rather brilliant Blitz magazine if you haven't done so already. Our favourite magazine out there for people like you who love music like we do. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Take care. Bye bye for now. Thank you for watching the Electronic Cafe. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And we'll see you again soon. Bye bye.